If you're looking to justify getting a smaller tractor over a bigger tractor, or you're grappling with that decision, go smaller, go bigger, right? You always hear bigger is always better. Well, let's give you some ammo to make a case for bigger is bad, right? Maybe smaller is better and what those reasons are, why you can justify going with a smaller machine over a bigger one. And so by smaller, I mean subcompact tractors like a John Deere 1025R, a Kubota BX. Those are gonna be subcompacts that are the smallest tractor that you can get with a front end loader on it. You can get a backhoe for them too. You can get belly mowers, all that kind of stuff. And then up into one size up from that, like the Summit TX25, Kubota B2601, you know, the LX2610, um, John Deere 2025R, 2032R maybe in there, but you, you get the idea. The smaller end of the size range of compact tractors. So I made a bunch of notes that I wanted to make sure I didn't forget. And one of the common themes was cheaper, right? And so I wanna hit that first and cheaper in a lot of ways. Now the first way they're cheaper is gonna be with the machine cost itself. Probably goes without saying, a smaller machine is cheaper than a bigger machine. There's rare exceptions. The John Deere 2032R, while a two series tractor is more expensive than a, a bigger John Deere 3E tractor, like a 3032E. So, you know, every once in a while you'll have something that's kind of out of order, but most of the time they're cheaper. This also means the attachments are gonna be cheaper because you get the tractor, that's just the beginning. You need attachments to actually do the work that you wanna get done, all the projects that you have around your house or your farm. And so a smaller snow pusher, a smaller grapple, a smaller, uh, land plane, a smaller rear blade, a smaller whatever it is, is gonna be cheaper to get than something bigger like on a John Deere 4 Series or a Kubota M Series, whatever it is. And then you're gonna have maintenance and repair costs that go along with that. So this is a common theme, cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. So it's gonna be, you know, less engine oil, for example, even just down to that. You know, a smaller fuel filter versus a, a bigger one. You know, all these little things, if you have to do repairs, if you have to get new tires down the road, those are all cheaper. So your cost of ownership is gonna be lower as well compared to a larger machine. And then even kind of the associated items that go along with it. If you need to tow it around, haul it around, you can get by with a smaller truck to tow it, a smaller trailer to tow it, then a bigger, heavier trailer, a bigger super duty truck, whatever it is. So everything about it is just a general theme of cheaper and perhaps that makes it more appealing to you. And don't be fooled, these smaller tractors can do almost all the jobs the bigger tractors can do. They're just gonna take longer you might have to plan ahead more often. We've shown all sorts of videos tackling big projects with small tractors, and that's on purpose. That's just to kind of push the limits, you know, and, and yeah, I mean, if you have more seat time on there, that's a good thing, right? You're gonna burn through more fuel, I suppose. Uh, maybe you'll wear through replaceable edges and parts more often because you're putting more time on those attachments, but that's pretty trivial in the grand scheme of things. And in fact, recently I showed the first time ever that my 1025R has failed me, and that was, intentional, right? Because it was to show you not that it's the wrong tool for the job or anything else, but that you just need to plan ahead. And if I would have not waited for all the snow we had to fall for video purposes, right? If I was just not making a video about this, I would have been out there every three, four, five inches clearing the snow down the lane and anywhere else around my property. But that's kind of the point is to push these things to the limit, show you what works, what doesn't, that way you don't get caught in the same mistakes and find yourself in a real pickle. Now there are certain real limitations that you can't do anything about. For example, you really can't pick up a round bale with a 1025R. If you tweak the hydraulics and do some other things that are maybe kind of sketchy, perhaps you can, but if somebody's asking me, hey, should I buy a 1025R to lift a round bale? I'm gonna say no, get something bigger. If you need to dump into a high side dump trailer, like our Diamond C that we have, can a 1025R do that? No, it can't. So. Maybe you could build some ramps, get something makeshift up there. Again, kind of sketchy. You're, you're bending the rules, so to speak, to make it happen, but these are real limitations, just the laws of physics, right? Same thing with a backhoe. A backhoe designed to work on one of these tractors can only dig down so deep. So if you need to dig eight foot down, you gotta rule these out or come up with something really creative, but I, I, don't, I don't have a, a sketchy idea to help you out there. But uh, anyway, you get the idea. So they can do most things. Everything's gonna have a limitation at some point. Just jot it down, all your jobs that you gotta do, and see if these can get it done. Hey, pardon the interruption, just really quick. If you need a tractor attachment, give us a shot. Check out goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country. We have attachments for the front end loader, the three-point hitch, 
most likely something to fit your needs. We have rewards, free shipping and financing too. Earlier I touched on it being lighter, so you can use a smaller lighter trailer to transport it around on a smaller vehicle. So also to go along that same theme, being light means it's gonna be easier around your yard. You know, if you have a nice finished lawn all around your, your yard, or maybe um, came up recently, a, a, a landscaper was asking, should I go with a, you know, a couple different models of tractor, a bigger one or a smaller one? And I, I didn't tell him what way to go. I just kind of gave him the same advice I'm giving you now on the pros and the cons of each. And it's the same concept. You know, if, if you're gonna be around your nice lawn, I'm not gonna drive my big Kubota or my skid steer around there because I'm gonna run it up, tear the turf up. It's gonna be, a, I'm just creating more work for myself. So that's the benefit of having a smaller lighter tractor is you can. You can do the landscaping around your yard, put it a boulder wall, you know, dig that sandbox, whatever it is you want to do. So on that note, again, light is good in a lot of ways, but sometimes you need heavy. And so the Summit is a heavier tractor by design. It's got rim guard standard. Comes out of the factory with rim guard in the rear tires, you know, so it's, it's a heavy machine to start with. They make it heavier for ballast weight, counterweight when you're using your front end loader. That could be with a grapple, could be with a bucket full of dirt, could be a set of pallet forks, you're picking up something heavy. You wanna make sure you're planted firmly on the ground back there. Most tractors are not gonna have that in there, okay? And you can add rim guard inside your rear tires. That's a great start. You wanna have a combination of weight typically. Rim guard, wheel weights, suitcase weights. We have hitch hangers here with suitcase weights on those or a Versa bracket with suitcase weights. Check your manual. These small tractors still need around a thousand pounds of ballast weight on the backside. So you can take all that off when you want to go mow your lawn. That's a good thing, right? But put it back on when you're going to get back to doing your loader work. And so that's one of the reasons we are sponsored by RimGuard. I mean, it's tractor safety is a big deal on our channel. All right. And that form of weight is cheap. It's the cheapest form of ballast weight you can get. It's hidden inside the tires. RimGuard is the heaviest all natural ballast weight per gallon on the market. It's not gonna corrode your wheels, it's not gonna freeze, it's non-toxic, okay? And again, this ballast weight helps keep it planted to the ground for safety, for traction, for efficiency. Storage space, all right? If you don't have a big old barn, right, and you're trying to put this next to your car in your garage at home, well, smaller tractors take up less space. So do their attachments. You'll see a lot of videos out there where folks are making racks inside their, their barns or their garages and stacking all those small attachments. The bigger you go with those different tools you have, the harder that's gonna to be to do. So that's a real big benefit there. And, and even overhead storage, getting inside a standard height, you know, a seven foot garage, you can get a subcompact or a small compact, you fold the rocks down and you can get inside a standard height garage, no problem at all. I know a lot of folks, that's a big deal too, trying to keep things inside when we've had all of our construction going on and, and everything else, and I've had to store my tractors outside, I've hated it, right? So having my stuff getting back inside now is a big deal to me and I know it is to you too. And I think the last thing I would say is kind of summed up as easier, right? And that can be easier to get on and off or lower to the ground so you don't have to climb up a bunch of steps and kind of finagle around. So if it's, that's a challenge for you, then this can be a benefit to it. Easier to kind of navigate through tight spaces. So if you have a tight yard or if you have tight areas in the woods, it's, it's more nimble in that regard. Hooking up attachments can be easier. The attachments are all gonna be lighter and they're still heavy steel, but oftentimes you can manhandle something to kind of, to get it to line up if you're not able to do so with the tractor. You can kind of push or pull on it and get it to go where it needs to go. Even a PTO shaft on a small attachment just weighs less than a big old honker on a, on a Kubota M4, for example. So everything about it is just, it is. It's just easier in that regard. And of course, I can, I can make a case for the bigger is better all day long as well, but there's a lot of good things about smaller tractors and they get a, they get a bad rap from, from folks that think they're just, oh, they're just toys or, you know, you mean that lawnmower there? And they can do a lot of stuff and not just my channel, but so many other channels out there have shown that. So hopefully this helps paint a clear picture of what the capabilities are of a small machine and maybe open your eyes, check out the videos, read the forums, see what others have to say before you buy. Now, while we don't sell tractors, we do sell tractor attachments. So if you're looking for something for your front end loader or your three point hitch, we'd love to help you out. We ship all over the country every day of the week. So check us out at goodworkstractors.com. And if you wanna keep up with what's going on around here, hit that subscribe button down below. It's completely free. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.